Okay, so what does it even mean to be the best theme or the best plugin? I mean, obviously it's gonna be subjective, obviously, but what we can do is see how many people like something more than something else and we can kind of take an average of that and that's what we usually do when we do voting. So what we are going to do today to identify these best themes and plugins as much as we can obviously is check how many votes did each plugin get and see the best rated. Thankfully the store has a functionality to do that so we can just sort by the best one. So that's what we're going to do. Let's see what the KD community think is the best themes and widgets and we'll do that for each category so let's start off with application style and of course on top is lightly which i've talked about at least three times already because it's a really good theme i mean nobody is surprised about that so it is a c++ theme that is a fork of breeze and implements a lot of new options and looks very good as an example you do have the ability to make sidebars transparent and blurry which personally i love and also the header bar that part at the top can also be transparent and blurry which i also love and in general the look is very good with a lot of very nice shadows and such. Also there's a lot of animations which in my opinion is something that Breeze really lacks. In second place instead we have Classy which is a C++ theme I think that I've not seen enough of and it also looks like it's a fork of Breeze however it has so many options like you do also have the ability to make the header bar transparent but you also have the ability to change a lot of how things look even for some reason decoration so if you're into customizations that you should totally check out the classy application theme as well switching to cursors because uh, we are going alphabetically of course there's a slight winner which is the Oreo, I guess it's pronounced, which is a bit of a drop-like uh, look with, uh, for some reason, a circle animation inside of it which makes me feel like it's always loading. It seems like people really like that animation and to be fully honest I do not understand why. I would be worried that it would like distract me just to have an animation always there but you know what, I'll try out the cursor theme and see if I'm just plain wrong. It also, and this is super important, comes with a variety of colors, which is something that I love and that allows you to pick the one that's gonna fit better with the rest of your style. So 10 out of 10 on that. The second place is called Bibata and it's a bit more traditional, like it's not always spinning, but it's also very rounded, which is a very nice look and it manages through the roundness to look very modern. So I can understand why it got there. Now let's talk about global themes, which basically are big packages that set up all the other stuff. So plasma theme, application style theme, everything else is controlled by the global theme. So in this case, we have like the styles that manage to bring uh, uh, some sort of visual coherence throughout all the other categories. And in first place, we have Sweet Mars, which looks like this. And honestly, I'm not surprised it's first. It's quite original and innovative. It manages to have a sweet version of pretty much everything in every other category. So it's very visually coherent, as we'll see. And it comes with a plasma theme, decorations, color scheme, icons, wallpaper, and logging, logging theme, and more. And it has this colorful but mixed with a dark kind of vibe that I can really understand why people would like that. So great job. Second place, we have the Chrome OS global theme, which makes everything look like Chrome OS. Okay, that one I didn't expect to be fully honest, but nonetheless, it looks pretty good. Let's switch to applets. So what's up with that? In the first place, we have the advanced radio applet, which allows you to uh, listen to the radio, but also it has an editable list of stations. It displays album art and info for the current track, and it allows to search for radio stations, and the design follows exactly what I intended for Plasma Applets because it uses the Plasmoid heading which I've introduced so I'm I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you developer. I think this is actually a great example on 
how widgets should look like and be developed from third parties. So 10 out of 10, you deserve first place. In second place though, we also have a very nice applet, which is Translator. It uses the translate shell package to, you know, translate between languages. And it even has a text to speech if you have Qt Multimedia installed, which you should have. This is another very simple yet super useful applet that I can understand why people would put in second place. So thumbs up. Next up is wallpaper plugins. And the first place goes to a plugin that I've already talked about, which is inactive blur, which is also my favorite plugin because it has blur in the name. Everything that has blur in the name is my favorite. So basically what it does is whenever you open an application, it makes the wallpaper blurry and that's it. And to me, that gives some sense of depth to the desktop that is just perfect. So I actually use it daily. In second place, we also have a wallpaper wallpaper, I guess that's how it's pronounced, which allows you to set a different wallpaper for each virtual desktop, which is something that users ask for a lot. So I'm happy to say that apparently this widget does it. I have no idea how and I would very much be interested in discovering it. So maybe I'll give a sneak peek to the code, but it's it's here, you can use it. Apparently it works. It was last updated three years ago, but apparently, according to the comment, it still works. So I didn't know we had that. Next up is a Quantum theme. So as always, to use Quantum theme, you first have to install Quantum, and then you have to use the Quantum manager to select the Quantum theme, and then you have to go into system settings and say to use Quantum as an application theme. So there's a bit of things to set up, but once you do that, you can finally use it. And uh, what's the highest rated quantum theme, you might ask? It's sweet again. <laughs> I mean, j just look at these screenshots. Come on, it's it's great. So thumbs up for Zwit. They are doing an am amazing job. The second place goes to Leian, which also looks like quite modern. It has like gradient patterns and is slightly transparent with blur behind it. So I'm happy. And I mean, it looks pretty good. Again, I can see why it's second place. Now let's start talking about window managing, starting off with Kwin effects. So the first one is called the TV glitch, and it's actually the same effect that GNOME has through the burn my window extension, which is also called the TV glitch, and it has just been ported as is to KD Plasma. And in fact, the second and third and fifth and sixth places as well are all Burn My Windows extension GNOME effects brought to KDE as is. So it looks like people really like these third party effects, which I can understand. However, the fourth one is not, <laughs> at least one is not a Burn My Window effect, but rather is the grayscale effect that makes the whole desktop grayscale, which is actually useful. As an example, there are a lot of websites and apps that use bright saturated colors to make you kind of addicted to them. So I actually used to have grayscale both on my computer and on my phone as well. Now I just live with my addiction. Now let's talk about Kwin scripts and first blur gets the first place. So what's that? It's actually really simple. You should never use it out of the box. But if you're doing a customization that uses other themes that are transparent but do not blur behind, you can use this effect to make sure that those themes are also blurred behind, which you should totally do like everything that is transparent should always always be blurred behind that is advice from the best kitty <laughs> In second place, we have sticky window snapping, which basically means that whenever you put two windows together and then resize one, the other one resizes as well, so that, you know, it, it's very useful. And actually, in the very latest version of Kitty Plasma, so 5.27, it is included out of the box, at least for um, split screen applications, and I think I also tested with some more. 
I'm not sure if all the use cases from this effect, the, this script, sorry, are covered by uh, KD Plasma 5.27, but a lot of them are. So, so now this script is useless. Bye bye. No, just kidding. Then we have Latte Doc layouts because uh, Latte Doc still exists and you can use it, especially if you use the Git master version, which should, in theory work flawlessly and there has been like bug fixes to the master version if even after it got unmaintained so it's it's not completely that we can still use latidoc so what's the most common latidoc layout is the macintosh big sur style layout which looks uh, exactly like Macintosh Big Sur and it, it looks really good because the designers at Apple know what they're doing and also the person that did this layout with Latidoc knew what they were doing as well. So everything looks pretty great and if you like Macintosh then you should totally go for this one. Latidoc allows a lot more than uh, plasma panels and by the way I would totally love for plasma panels to have some kind of system settings page with layouts for the plasma panel but nobody has managed to implement that yet sadly so one day i can hope that we'll have that but um, not today in second place we have the moe layout which is much more original and interesting in my opinion you still get the bottom dock but on the top you have a segmented panel so you have a top left panel top center and top right ones so it's basically one single panel but split in three and you also have an on-demand sidebar because latidoc also does that you can have side sidebars as well. I, I forgot how good Latidoc was to be honest. I would totally love for sidebars to be in plasma panels as well but um, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Color schemes. So apparently people like uh, looks that are very easy on their eyes which means that the very first place goes to optimal eliminate a strain which is a grayish color scheme which looks uh, I wouldn't say like super good but I guess it does what it's supposed to be which is to be easy on the eyes and even the second place which goes to marble marble is also meant according to the description to be easy on the eyes even though this time it's a light theme so yes the highest rated color scheme is a dark color scheme. A big mistake for humanity, light themes are significantly better than dark ones. You should always use breeze light instead of breeze dark, but sometimes big mistakes are done in history. Anyway, plasma themes. So the first place goes to rounded in big caps, much to my surprise. I didn't actually expect that. It's a, a very rounded theme which is slightly transparent in my opinion they should use a little bit of contrast effect because it looks like the things are for my personal tastes for my personal tastes i have to admit that whenever i have to do a plasma theme with big rounded corners i always give a sneak look to the rounded svgs so i have used them for inspiration i just didn't know that they were the very highest rated plasma theme on the kd store so that's quite an achievement the second place goes unsurprisingly to sweet i'm not gonna insert yet another screenshot of sweet like you got the idea you know how sweet looks like by now then we have window decorations so the first place is for my N, which for the very first time in this video I had never heard of. So what is for my N? So apparently it looks a bit transparent blurry, which makes me very happy. And it has this skeuomorphic Windows XP style, except this one is actually much better than Windows XP. It looks good. I mean, it's not exactly my style, but I, I would I would use it. <laughs> Why not? The second place goes to Ember, which is also slightly blurry and transparent. But interestingly enough, they actually use just uh, colorful squares, which is a pretty interesting design decision design decision so then we have a splash screens so in the first place we have quarks splash dark rightfully because it shows a super nice animation whenever you're logging into KD plasma with all the dots flying around that looks really good actually I actually contacted the author and asked hey can I upstream this to KD and they were like yes but uh, believe me nobody's gonna accept it and they were right I never managed to 
convince other KD developer that it was a, a good idea to upstream this, but I still think that we should just go with this, but whatever, I can understand that. Instead, in second place, we have a very pretty Fractal 3, that is, that's how I see Fractal 3s with my hands, okay? So that's very pretty as well. Then we have login themes and we have sugar candy in a well-deserved first place because it's beautiful. So you have this sidebar which is blurred and th the sidebar is blurred and then there's of course the login information on top of that and it just looks gorgeous and even the author has managed to find some specific setups that look even better even without blur so th this is the login theme and if it was up to me we should just use that it's not quite in line with the design of kd plasma but it just looks so good so KD developers, please allow me to switch the KD Plasma login theme to Sugar Candy, please. Second place goes to the Chili theme, which is a bit more like what KD is doing. So blurring everything and giving the login info right at the center. And it's also a bit more like, I don't know, Macintosh, but it looks good. So what can I say? Finally, last one, we have wallpapers because um, yes, we are allowed to vote on wallpapers as well and the highest rated wallpaper of all times on the KDE store is Space Plasma, which looks like this. And to be clear, it's good. It's really good. However, KDE Plasma wallpapers included by default on KDE Plasma are just too perfect to make me think, yeah, I should use this one because KDE Plasma has the best wallpapers. That's, I think, uh, objective through. The second one is a very nice butterfly. So if you like butterflies, this is a very nice butterfly. But yet again, KDE Plasma wallpapers included by default are just perfect. So, so you should never switch to any other. And uh, by the way, I wanted to thank everybody that is currently sponsoring the channel because it's a lot of people and sometimes looking at the number of people contributing to my channel makes me go, whoa, that's a lot of responsibilities. So I'm trying my best and I hope that you're liking these videos that I'm doing and hopefully to, you know, make even more of videos and even more KD contributions if I'm able to then you can ship in something I've got Patreon, LibraPay, Ko-Fi, YouTube memberships, anything, people, everything is fine if you're able to do a donation that would be awesome. I've got a 700 goal for each month right now we're 460 if I remember correctly so if we manage to get to 700 then all expenses are surely covered that would be awesome if we do not get to 700, I'll just stop doing videos forever. Or not, j just kidding, just kidding. So thanks for following and uh, see you in a couple of days with a new video.